Hi there, and welcome to this tutorial on using particles in the Blender game engine. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to use the free plugin Easy Emit by Andy to create particle systems in your game, as well as how to create your own particles in GIMP and then import them into the particle system. For this tutorial, you're going to need the latest version of Blender, and for the second part where we create the particles, you'll also need GIMP. So the first thing we want to do is create our script. So we start with the text editor and create a new file, call it easy emit or emitter, and then start to type in the code. You can just follow me typing this in, so you don't have to worry about the code itself. I'm just typing in the basic import modules and then going on to create the module that we need. I'm not going to copy this. I won't copy that. Please provide the script. I won't copy this. I'm not a programmer. This is a tutorial. Please, please provide the script. I won't copy that. All right, don't worry. You don't need to script this by hand. The plugin will create the necessary Python files itself. I'll provide the link to this script in the description, so you can just grab that. You don't even need an account or Blender artist for that. So the first thing you want to do is install this plugin. This can easily be done by going to the preferences, go to add-ons and click install, and just choose the zip file. Don't unpack the zip file, just choose it. And it will then install that file. Now, when you've installed that, you need to search for it in the search bar and activate it. Then, Blender will add a particle menu to your particle system when in game mode. So now you can add a cube and create a particle system. That will automatically create all the logic and create the files that are necessary to kind of add these particles to the object. So on your last layer, you will have the particle planes that will be the actual models that will be added through the script. And you should also make sure to set up a camera, as these particles will always be rotated to the camera. As these planes are just 2D, you have the best visual effect when they are dragged to the camera automatically. Alright, so now I'll just go quickly through these options and tell you what they do. First of all, you can use this drop-down menu to add particles to the system. The first option is the particle scale. Now this is independent for every particle that you add. The second thing is the emission time, which should stay at zero so that it emits all the time and doesn't stop at a point. The particle lifetime decides how long the particles exist in the game world. Now some of these settings depend on the particle lifetime, for example the color fading, so if you change that value, you should also change these at the bottom. The emission amount is the amount of particles that get added per second. Now don't set this too high, at some point it won't make a difference anymore, but just lag and decrease performance. The spherical emission will decide on how these particles move on these axes. So it kind of rotates them to these axes, which you don't really see that much as it's 2D still, but you can actually see the effect, so it kind of creates this cone shape in which the particles can move. So if you set the spherical emission to zero, the particles will get emitted in a straight line. The emission range decides on which points the particles will be added. So if it's at 0, 0, 0, they will all be added from the center point of this cube. And if you increase it, they will be added over the surface of this cube. This can also be used, for example, to create some snow effect. So this is just a quick idea on how to use it. So I increased the amount and lifetime and increased the emission range so that these particles will now get added over a large surface and look like it's snowing. Now the start color and end color is pretty obvious. You have a color fading in there, which lets you only with these two colors already create a large amount of particle effects. Now you can also decide on the color fading time. So if you increase the lifetime, you maybe want the color to fade through the whole time these particles exist. Maybe you want it to fade right after they start to exist. So you can use that to change the way the color blends. Now the particle rotation will just rotate the objects. You shouldn't set this too high as this will 
create kind of crazy effects that are not pleasant to look at. The start speed and end speed decide on how fast the particles will be emitted. You also have a fading value for that one, so play with these two if you want slower or faster animations. Now you can for example create something that starts very fast and then gets slower, such as dust or smoke that emits from a fire. The random movement just does what it says, it makes the particles move randomly at the degrees that you set, so if you get this very high they won't move in the z direction anymore but in kind of any direction. The start size and end size let you animate the size of the particles, so that you can make them grow or shrink. This comes also with the fading again, so you can decide on your own how fast they get big or small. Lastly, you have the option to make the emitter invisible, which you should usually do, and you have this emitter on button. Now this doesn't make much sense, as you would always want this to be on, but I'll show you right now what this script actually created in our logic, and then you can use this emitter on button to toggle the emission. Now you can see here it created a vast amount of properties, and we can kind of change all these values on the fly, so while the engine is running, you can change all the values that you've just set up with logic. So I will now toggle the emitter on with a spacebar so that I can yeah, activate the particle system when I hit space. Now also click tab so that it only will get the first input and then stop and not flip it all the time. So now when I hit it, it starts the particle system and when I hit spacebar again, it stops it. So this way you can control this whole particle system with your logic. Now I'll show you how you can create custom particles in GIMP and later how to import them to our particle system. Alright, so the first thing you want to do is create a new image. 256 by 256 should be enough, as the particles will be pretty small on the screen later. You can also decrease that. Then you want to use the path tool to create a basic fire particle looking shape. Now fire particles look like kind of candle flames, so we will use these particles to imitate a full flame later. I'm using the path tool to kind of form the basic shape of this. Then I'll select the brush tool, select a hard brush, shrink it down to a smaller size, something about 5 will do. Then create a new layer and go to the path tab and select stroke path and stroke with a paint tool and select our brush. So it will use the settings of the brush we've just set to follow the path with the paint tool. Then I duplicated the layer three times and used some Gaussian blur on these layers. The first one with a small blur of about 15. the second one with a big blur of about 50. Then I duplicated that one again to increase the halo effect and duplicated the most upper layer to smudge it out a bit to make it look a little less generic and a little more random. So you can just smudge it out. Keep in mind to smudge only to the outer sides as this will create a better looking effect. Also always duplicate the first layer before editing it, so you don't need to reuse the stroke path tool. Then I use a motion blur filter to blur it into the direction, into the top direction, so we get some background blur. Now it depends on how close you are to the edge of the screen, 
uh, on how much of strength you want to use here. Then I move this whole thing down a bit as I feel like I'm getting a bit too close to the screen edge and I don't want to cut off these particles. I then move down the motion blur layer so it fits again with the lines of the particle. And then I use the smudge tool again to fill the black inside of this particle with more white. And so we have a little gradient in there. I don't just draw it in, but use the smudge tool from the outer sides and fill it in with that way. So you should at the end have something like a white outline that's smudged away and a bit blurry and a less bright inside, which has black in the middle. Now I'll recreate several versions of this. About three should be enough. The more you create, the more variety you will have in your fire, but usually if you create three, that's enough. You won't really be able to spot the difference if you create like 10, for example. Now after we've created these images, we want to import them into our particle system. For that, go to the last layer where all the particles are at and select one of these white particles and duplicate them. Then hit U to make the material a single user so that if we edit the image now, we won't delete the original particle off and select your image that you've just created. Now also make sure to remove the particle from the particle list so you won't get any errors with the original particle. Then change the name to something shorter, as we want to have it in the drop-down list later. And add it to the particle list again to refresh it. And in edit mode, rotate the particle so that it's rotated correctly. And then just repeat these steps for the other particles. So always make sure to make the image a single user, so we don't delete the texture off of the other particle image. Delete it from the particle list, rename it, assign a new texture, and then add it to the particle list again. So after following these steps, you will now have these particles in your drop-down list. Now sometimes when you're reloading the file, it happens that this drop-down list is gone. If that happens, it's obviously corrupted. And I tend to just create a new file for my particle system to make sure that if I want to edit it, I can just recreate it and don't kind of corrupt my original blend file. And then I just append this cube with the particle system and copy the imager script. Since the way Blender handles these alpha planes has changed since EasyEmit has been released, it doesn't really work with the shadows right now and it kind of draws these shadows. So you just need to go to the Material tab and delete off all these Receive and Cast Shadow options so that your particles won't show up in the shadows. Alright, so now I'll give you a quick walkthrough on how to create a fire a more realistic fire than the standard fire. For that, I'll just use the three fire particles I've created in Jim, add them to the particle system, increase the lifetime so that they last longer, increase the amount to about 15, then change the speed so the fire actually is a little slower than these emitted particles, and change the color fading to match the lifetime that we've uh, set. And I'll change it to 90 and not 100, so a bit of the red stays at the end. Then change the size to 0.4 to something smaller. That obviously depends on what you like. I want to create a little smaller fire. And change the end size to something even smaller, so that you get this cone shape that usually a fire has. Also increase the size fading so that it fades over the whole lifetime. Now you get this basic fire looking thing, which looks quite good already, but you can increase the visuals even more. First of all, you want to decrease the background color a bit, as this will always look better on darker backgrounds, since usually the fire is not in a bright surrounding. Then duplicate this cube and just delete off the flame particles and add a smooth particle. 
This will now represent the outer glow of the fire. Increase the size to about 1.7, so it's actually a bit bigger than the fire itself. Decrease the amount, as else this will get too bright. Set the end size to be the same as the start size, so it will actually stay this big. And you can see now this is slowly moving upwards. And if we now move these two to the same position, so they all emit from the same starting point, you can see that this looks like the fire is actually glowing. Now the last thing we want to add is some kind of little particles that fly out of the fire that you see when uh, wet wood is burning. For that we'll just copy the cube again, delete the smooth particle and add a hard particle. Set the size to something very small, 0 0.02 will do. Increase the lifetime to a bit more as these particles are smaller and will fly out further. Increase the amount as well as we want more of these little particles flying around. Adjust the color fading to the lifetime again. Set the speed to something even smaller, as these are kind of supposed to fly around slowly. And adjust the speed fading a bit, so it reaches its end speed already pretty early. And add a high amount of random movement, so that these will actually fly out of the fire at random locations. If you now combine all these three steps, you will get a fairly realistic looking fire. Now this was only a quick walkthrough. If you want to see the settings, just pause the video and copy them out. As there's not much to explain here why I chose these settings, I've explained how these settings work in the beginning. I hope this was very interesting to you. If you're interested in more particle systems and how to set up more effects, just leave me a comment and I'll think about doing more. For example, some magic spells or whatever you can think of. Obviously, thanks to ND for creating this and a special thanks from me for allowing me to use this and present this to you. And as always, if you have any questions or suggestions on other tutorials, leave me a comment. Thanks for watching.